Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. This is Disciples Net, and we're so glad you're here. Come now and let's worship God together. Our scripture passage this day is Psalm 27, and I'll be reading from Psalms for Praying, An Invitation to Wholeness, by Nan Merrill. Love is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Love is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When fears assail me, rising up to accuse me, each one in turn shall be seen in love's light. Though a multitude of demons rise up within me, my heart shall not fear. Though doubts and guilt do battle, yet shall I remain confident. One thing I have asked of love, that I shall ever seek, that I might dwell in the heart of love all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of my beloved, and to know love's plan. For I shall hide in love's heart in the day of trouble, as in a tent in the desert, away from the noise of my fears. And I shall rise above my struggles, my pain, shouting blessings of gratitude in love's heart and singing melodies of praise to my beloved. Hear, O oh my beloved, when I cry aloud, be gracious and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart responds, Your face, my beloved, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not turn from me. You have been my refuge. Enfold me in your strong arms, O blessed one. Though my father and mother may not understand me, you, my beloved, know me and love me. Teach me to be love as you are love. Lead me through each fear. Hold my hand as I walk through valleys of illusion each day, that I may know your peace. I believe that I shall know the realm of heaven, of love here on earth. Call upon the beloved, be strong and trust in the heart's courage. Trust in the power of love. The Beloved's unconditional and everlasting love for you. Will you join me now in prayer? Dear Creator and Comforter, how we need your light and sustenance. We remember the Holy Family that took flight 2,000 years ago, and think of the many exiles and refugees of today, both lowly and highborn, as they spend time in camps dependent on aid from afar. Many are in deep despair. Abide with them in their homes in these camps and borderlands, and guide us to find effective solutions to the chronic displacement of people. 
We ask that all paths tread lightly upon this earth, that all who take breath and labor find haven and cultivate the practice of peace and gratitude. Our tears of grief fall in so many parts of this world. Families and nations are burdened by such loss and disbelief that again, innocents are hurt and murdered. Wrap these families in your peace that passes all understanding. Sustain the caregivers, police and rescue workers that bring such courage to their work. Sustain representatives and executives in our countries, many who are or have recently taken office. Give them wisdom and clarity and unity of purpose as they work. Inspire them to work for the good of all and not for personal or political gain. O oh God, the eternal I am who listen to those who are too feeble to speak, too crushed by fears and worries, those forgotten and deeply alone, may your Holy Spirit descend upon them and upon we who intercede in prayer, nourishing and binding us all with your great love. Hear us as we pray in your Son, Jesus Christ's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who are confess, I usually think of the Psalms as a side dish, the gospel with its lessons that are learned in the life of Jesus, the epistle with its teaching of the early church on how to be a community, uh, the prophet that speaks truth to power. Now that is all meat and potatoes. So I was a little bit surprised when I didn't have any appetite for those texts that I typically think of as more substantial and filling. I was even more astonished when the psalm spoke so powerfully to my soul. Apparently, I'm not the only one experiencing this craving. Don Cher, the editor of Poetry Magazine, recently speculated about why people are turning to poetry right now. Why, in the face of terrorism and tragedy and tumult the world over, why, on November 9, 
after the unexpected results of the U.S. election, why did poetry go viral? Don Chair named the obvious. The new communication outlets like Twitter and Facebook demand brevity from their participants, obviously. But there was something more. Cher hit on something that resonated more deeply with me. Poets, he said, actually walk the earth. They're grounded, feet first, pointing forward, paying attention to every moment. They imagine things before they're possible. Poets have an audience, Don Cher said, because we need to know how to go about reaching the next day of our lives. Psalms like this one are what Nan Merrill, in her poetic interpretation of the Psalms, a book called Psalms for Praying, and I'm not just promoting it, I just used it. Psalms for Praying calls for deep yearnings, cries of the soul. Psalms bear witness, she said, to love in these unsettling times. At a time when I'm having a hard time myself, knowing the best way to face the uncertainty of the coming days, I long for that which bears witness to love. Don't you? The psalm, at its simplest, Psalm 27, reflects a fundamental theological statement. God is love. I am particularly drawn to Nan's present-day interpretation of this text. Where the traditional text uses God, Merrill uses love. In so doing, her interpretation conjures a relationship rather than a personified character. Her text for verse 1 reads, Love is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Love is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? But you have to keep going in this psalm to understand the whole relationship. While it starts with confidence, Psalm 27 also reads like the words of someone who is running for his life. Hear, my beloved, when I cry aloud, do not turn from me. Then it ends with a pep talk to the audience. Call upon the beloved. Be strong and trust in the heart's courage. Trust in the beloved's unconditional and everlasting love for you. People who study the Psalms suggest David wrote this one during some of the seven years when he was running from place to place to escape the bitterness and rage of a jealous King Saul. While David had been Saul's right hand in the battle with the Philistines, and he'd been utterly loyal. King Saul had attempted to kill him on a number of occasions out of jealousy. This agonizing chapter of David's life, you know, isn't a time when you need a sappy sentiment. Love is key to David's survival. Merrill's interpretation expresses this deeply spiritual connection in this way. One thing I've asked of love, that I shall ever seek, that I might dwell in the heart of love all the days of my life. It is from this kind of security, not physical protection, but a transcendent refuge in love, that David draws strength. When fears assail, yet shall I remain confident, the text says. This homeless, hunted, teenage king embraces a relationship that transcends a character. David seeks love as his dwelling place. Like all poets, David is grounded, feet first, pointing forward, paying attention to every moment, imagining things before they're possible. David's psalm says, I don't know what's coming in the days ahead. But maybe with love's steadfast companionship, I can take this next step. If 2016 was any indication, then we woke up in a tough year ahead for us in 2017. 
didn't we? While we like to think of a new slate at the beginning of a new year, we know we bring a lot of 2016's baggage into this year. Suicide bombs, attacks on civilians, these kind of things are becoming so frequent that we're numbed from it. It's, it's like seeing frostbite on our own fingertips. We know that pain's going to be ungodly when we can feel again. The globe erupts in all manner of heightened natural disasters, from record-breaking hurricanes to earthquakes in unheard of places. The ice cap melts so much that polar bears, as mighty as they seem, continue to die for want of a habitat. Greed, lust, racism, and the worst of human avarice are celebrated as if that were not enough, humanitarian needs just promise to grow. In researching humanitarian aid organizations to project their needs into 2017, Reuters Foundation offers this sobering report. The United Nations projects that at least 87 million people in dozens of countries will require humanitarian aid in 2017. They seek a record $20.1 billion to meet that need. Even if we have a roof over our heads, even if we have enough food to eat to keep us alive, there's so many other ways for humans to suffer. The immediate effects of a tragedy are just the beginning. Other sorrows slip in. You know, some of us are going to awaken alone in a home we once shared with a loved one. They're not coming back. Many are going to watch the news maybe only in the morning because this world on fire with hate and hunger is no longer something you can do right before you go to bed. Many of us are seeking jobs after a successful career has imploded as technology changes again. Others work full time, but they can't make ends meet because wages are so low. Too many of us face 2017 with anxiety, making a home in our hearts, radiating like spilled paint on a flat surface. In times like this, is love enough? Can love really win? In times like this, what can we possibly learn from an ancient love poem written by an exiled teenager? We need love that defies death. We need love that overcomes circumstances and, and conditions. Love that oozes in every, every chapped crevice. We need love that tears down walls of separation and heals brokenness. We need love that meets us in our sorrow and cries with us. We need love that helps us get back up and keep on moving. We need love that goes on when we stop. Where are we going to find that kind of love? The psalmist knows. Do not turn from me. You who have been my refuge, teach me to be loved as you are loved. A few years ago, I joined a campaign in my home state of Indiana. At its core, the campaign stood against legislation that would have legitimized bigotry against the LGBTQ community in our state. The campaign was staffed by dozens of young people who are completely untethered from the church. They were not about to be bound by a community that says God is love from one side of its mouth and then from the other side spews hate against people who live and look and love differently from them. I remember working with one of the clergy one morning in the state capitol. He was telling the story of a young lesbian girl who had come to him after nearly taking her own life. She'd been so mistreated by the church, her family, and the people in her school, that she was starting to believe she was unloved and unlovable. He couldn't imagine adding a legislative layer that codified the kind of bigotry she had experienced. 
the kind of bigotry that almost cost her her life. He showed up that morning for her. As I sent him to tell his representative this story, one of the young people in the campaign walked over to me. Who was that? He asked. I told him it was the pastor and it's from one of our local congregations. He's a pastor? He asked me. Oh, well, yeah, he's a pastor. In a church? Well, yeah. A regular old Christian church? Yes. Does his congregation know he's here? Well, of course they do. They sent him. His jaw dropped. The next day we debriefed the entire day with the whole team. Someone asked, what did you learn from this experience? And this young man's hand went up. He confessed he didn't initially trust the faith community organizing part of the campaign. I grew up in the church, but I gave up on it, he told us. I really thought Christians were just hypocrites. And I'm still not sure. But yesterday, I heard a pastor speak up for a kid in a way that, that really surprised me. Yesterday, I expected hate, but love showed up. Love shows up to teach us to be love. Love is a tiny man named Gandhi who, who lifts a salt rock on the shores of the Arabian Sea in an act that shakes the foundations of the British Empire. Love stands shoulder to shoulder with, with tens of thousands of ordinary Indians to reject tyranny. Love is a black preacher named King with a dream that is bigger than our nightmare. Love stands shoulder to shoulder with hundreds on a bridge in Selma, Alabama to reject second-class citizenship. Love is a political leader named Mandela who endures imprisonment to set captives free. Love stands shoulder to shoulder with the people of South Africa and rejects apartheid. Love shows up in each of us, incarnate, flesh and bone, alive and breathing, standing shoulder to shoulder, dying to bring light into every corner of the world, even into your aching heart. Though I may speak with bravest fire And have the gift to all inspire And have not love, my words are vain As sounding brass and hopeless gain Though I may give all I possess, and striving so my love profess, but not begin my love within, the prophet soon turns strangely thin. Come Spirit, come, our hearts control. Our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed. By this we worship and are freed. I'm inviting you today to imagine yourself here in this chair beside me. So take a moment, close your eyes, Think about what is before us here and imagine that you are here with me at this table as we begin our communion. Because just as spoken today in the Psalms, which read, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord or the realm of heaven in the land of the living. And in the words of the old hymn, gather us in not in some building, small and confining, 
not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place, the new light is shining. Now is God present, and now is the day. This service is our reminder that God is in heaven, certainly, and in every building, but He is always here, present with us, wherever we are. With you in this imaginary chair in your mind, with me as I break the bread. This is the reminder that our God is a present God who calls us to be present in His world. And so now, join me in prayer as I pray for these elements, as I pray for these symbols of our God present with us. Heavenly God, God of earth, God of the seas, we give you thanks for this blessing of your symbol before us, of this bread that reminds us of the body of your Son, real and present among us, of the wine, the reminder of his blood, reminding us that to live in your world requires our sacrifice, but we give it, and we give it, if not in joy, in commitment to love all in your world. So now bless the bread and bless the cup as we partake of it, that we become truly symbols of your presence in a broken world. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same way, he took a cup. And having given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink it, all of you. So all is in readiness. Come and partake. certain times, you're not sure which direction is the most faithful. The psalmist says, let love be your light. Navigate by love's call on your life. Maybe in these uncertain times, you feel like you're running for your life, assailed and pursued by forces that overwhelm you. The psalmist says, trust love to be your dwelling place your sanctuary, even as you learn what you can from your struggle. Maybe in these uncertain times, you know someone who doesn't have the confidence that comes in the glow of love's light. Someone who is running for her life, who knows no shelter in the storm. The psalmist says, be loved 
even as you are loved. Bear witness to the love that walks the earth feet first, pointing forward, paying attention to every moment. Bear witness to love that imagines things before they're possible. Bear witness to love that helps people know how to go about reaching the next day of their lives. Be love, even as you are loved.